hi and welcome to my little recording studio here. How are you? I'm Luke, if you've not met me before, and I'm going to share with you today, hence why I'm in the studio, the first two chapters of my upcoming book, New York. I'm so excited to share this with you. It's been one of those that I feel like I've spent ages writing it. Um, it's been sort of buzzing around my mind ever since I finished some of the books earlier down in the series or further on, further back in the series. And I've been looking forward to sharing it with you for ages. I don't think it's going to be out until probably towards the end of the year. There's a bit of work to do. But these first couple of chapters I'm really, really pleased with. And I just thought I'd jump on here today and just record them for you. Um, see what you think. See what you think. If I make any mistakes, I am doing this live at the time, so there's no editing involved, so we'll see how we get on. New York, Chapter 1 There are moments in life where the present leaves the past behind. It's as though things have been separated by the sharp knife of a surgeon. Things just divide neatly at these times. They reinvent themselves in a wave of paradigm-shifting realisations. The world turns on a different axis. The old you stands there still and watching as the new you walks on into the unknown. He turned his face to the sky and felt the light rain pepper his skin. The wet swish of tyres on tarmac were distant here and the city was quiet. He tightened the grip of his right hand and felt the blood flow begin to slow. To start with it had pounded over his fingers, now it barely even dribbled. He looked down at the woman her eyes now still and marble-like, her skin as smooth as silk, her mouth an expressionless circle. The only thing that told him she was not simply resting was the grin his knife had cut through her neck, the knife that had also separated him from his past self. He was now a killer, a murderer, her murderer. He felt the cold blade between his fingers of his gloved right hand, he removed his left from her neck and lifted it to his face. The dripping blood was barely, bi barely, barely visible in the darkness. He could smell it, though. It was nourishing and fresh, like the smell of rain in the jungle. His tongue flicked out between wet lips. He longed to consume her, to make her part of him, as he had now, and would always be, part of her. She had made a sacrifice for him, and now in death he would honour that. She was his first. He was suddenly alert. Voices echoed down the passageway. No, not like this. He couldn't get discovered now. He needed time. He must have time to finish the job. A group of people passed the passage's aperture on the road ahead. He watched them. He felt exposed. It was as though the world once again was trying to take away what was his. He watched their glistening coats beneath the streetlights. None looked into the darkened passage. Why would they? Margins of the city like this held no interest. People were predictable. They wouldn't even notice the slim alley beside the bright lights of the building next door. It was the perfect location, he'd thought, finding it some weeks ago. Mansell Buck, MD, was one of the city's most prominent cosmetic surgeons. Those of fame and fortune passed through those brightly lit doors for a daily nip, tuck or whatever else was in vogue right now. No one would look down here tonight. He drew a deep breath as the voices faded back into the whisper of the city. No one had seen him, that was good. But he didn't have much time. Time was the enemy here. Time had almost prevented his great-grandfather fulfilling his artistic desires. That was not going to happen to him. He pulled up his left sleeve. His grandfather's gold chain glinted in some distant light. This is for you, he whispered, placing the chain against his lips. It tasted like blood. It's all for you. Then he dropped to his knees and unbuttoned her coat. Chapter 2 Gathering its energy, the St Lucian sun crept towards the Caribbean Sea. The day had been calm but hot. It was exactly the sort of day the locals in the markets of Castries hated. Making their way home for dinner, or for a swift one at the local rum shop, they fanned the heat away with menus, newspapers or even their fingers. Anything to push the thick, saturated, hot air from their faces. The pool at St James's Bay, which an hour before had been filled with the shouts and splashes of children, grew quiet with the dying day. 
the sedate blue water rippled gently, reflecting the surrounding palm trees. This looks all right, Leo said, walking to the pool's edge. He dropped his bag and looked around. His reflection shimmered in the surface of the pool. His baggy green T-shirt was creased and sweat mottled from the journey across the island. He was in desperate need of a haircut, but he was looking tanned from their time in the sun. It'll do, Alyssa said, her reflection joining Leo's in the pool. She looked towards the gently ripping, rippling ocean. She wore a bright blue strap top and yellow Alibaba pants. Her mixed race skin tone had darkened with the sun too, leading to many of the local people to assume she was from the island. Get ready for your first swimming lesson, Alyssa said, turning to Leo. Not tonight, Leo said, whining like a child. We've only just got here. Let's go to the bar and relax. No, Alyssa asserted. It's not like we've had a difficult day, and you said last week when we were done with the case you would practice swimming every day. Yeah, so we'll start tomorrow. No, Alyssa repeated, forcing Leo's keycard into his hands. We'll start now. Go up to your room, drop your bag, get your shorts, meet me back here in ten. Alyssa started to walk in the direction of their adjacent rooms. I'm not going to continue saving your ass every time there's water involved. Alyssa smiled, turned and walked away. Leo swore under his breath and smiled too. He knew full well that he would be in the water in less than ten minutes. There was no point arguing when Alyssa had, had, when Alyssa had her mind set on something. Leo let himself into his room, dropped his bag and changed quickly. Staying on in St Lucia was a good idea. They'd been flown to the island by a client to gather information about her husband who was living in a beachside mansion on the island's northern coast. Leo and Alyssa had spent the last week glued to a laptop from which they watched the millionaire's comings and goings. After the seventh consecutive day, seeing the same battered old Peugeot arriving late in the evening and leaving the following morning, each time driven by a glamorous woman with long dark hair, the client had called the whole thing off. Perhaps she had enough information. Perhaps she'd realised she didn't want to know exactly what her husband would up to, was up to. Either way, Leo and Alyssa had been paid handsomely to come to the island, so decided to make use of it. They'd found this resort with two spare rooms and had headed straight here. Leo padded back to the pool, a towel draped across his shoulder, and looked around the place. It was nice. A family, who Leo thought were probably English, walked towards the pool. Each wore clothes as crumpled as his own and their skin was a ruddy pink colour. Leo dropped his towel and slipped into the pool's shallow end. As the water's menacing ripples welcomed his body, Leo felt his pulse quicken. A flurry of laughter erupted from a group of people on a nearby table. Why did they have to be doing this now? Leo asked himself morosely. But then, something heading his way caught his eye and took his breath away. There you go. The first two chapters of New York. <laughs> what did you think? Let me know. Give me an email. What do you think? I'm really pleased with the way they've come out and I can't wait to share the rest of the story with you very, very soon. <laughs>